All right. We are just about ready to go here. How is everyone doing today? Um, let's see. Uh, some people have posted, I can't tell the timestamp. Are you in here right now? Or did you post that with the, uh, with the, uh, with the notation of this going live? <laughs> I can't tell. Uh, hello, everyone. Oh, that's a, Cindy was asking, 9 p.m. Eastern, yes. Oh, that's right, I should always post uh, Pacific Standard Time, that's correct. People don't know where I am, right? All right. So, all right. All right, so this video, we're going to be doing some faster versions of everything. Hello, Halls for Crafts. Hello, Sandy. Uh, and if anyone else is in, hello to you. Um, one of the things that occurred to me when editing some of these latest videos, I just keep, I don't know, I'm making these videos longer and longer and longer, doing these more in-depth, um, kind of larger um, scenes, and we need to do some um, quicker scenes, okay? Everyone loves seeing kind of quick and easy, okay? And uh, even when with quick and easy, though, the thing about those is that we always want them to, to have a, a dynamic result, right? We don't want to have quick and easy and you know, the end result looked like it was quick and easy, but so we want to do some little touches on um, variations that we'll look at. Hello, Diana. Hello, PJB Stamper. All right. So we did this scene in the previous video. I love how this thing came out. I love the composition. Let's do some faster versions of this composition. Okay. It might not, it's not going to look the same, you know, depending on what we use. If I do a scene on blue star dream or something like that you know what i mean it's just not going to look like this because we can't add in those different types of colors but let's work through some different variations of this so that uh, uh you know we people see some different applications so i don't think i'm going to be going for um you know a stacked uh you know bridge um, structure like this one because I'm going to be doing everything kind of more on the quarter page size okay so quick and easy you know what I mean it's not quick and easy I guess you can do quick and easy applications on a on a larger piece but you know when you're talking about that it just becomes kind of more minimal types of applications okay but yeah I, I really like how this one came out um, there were times in this one anytime I'm doing something like completely different okay the technique isn't different but there it just some of the color schemes and compositional type of structuring, I w just wasn't quite sure how it was going to turn out, um, you know, until we got, I don't know, if you, any of you were watching this, this was like, you know, we can kind of see it coming together, I think maybe at the 85% mark or something like that. Um, but hopefully <laughs> in these faster, uh, quicker types of um, incarnations will get to um, kind of, you know, a little bit more of an inclination of how something's going to be looking much sooner than that, okay? All right, so one of the things about doing faster types of applications of things is that, I mean, we can do, we can change media and whatnot, but, um, you know, if you start off with a white piece of paper, there's just so much more variation that can be uh, created, okay? If we start off with a, a piece of, you know, star dream or any type of dark paper like this i don't think we're going to be making this into a you know a super light you know high noon scene i guess you could but you'd really have to block off a lot of this hello annie good to see you um so uh that being said um let's try something on a dark you know uh iridescent star dream paper okay now, if you're doing, you can you can follow along, but if you're doing um, something on a dark paper like this, one of the things I'm going to suggest is blocking out, okay? Now, if you can do something on, uh, hello, Christine. Um, you can do something on, let's say, a matte construction paper or something like that. It doesn't have to be cardstock. Mine is the Star Dream, so it has that coating on it that gives it that iridescent finish. So I'm going to be using the brilliance on that, okay? Okay, but like I said, if you're using some sort of other type of cardstock that's not coated and it's porous, you can use, um, you know, I don't know, you're stamping up, you're here, you know, Hero Hues, you know, Unicorn White, or some, any, uh, you know, a lot of other types of white for this purpose right here, okay? 
All right, so, hello, Jeannie and Amanda. Um, all right, so, what I'm doing on this piece right here, this is a really fast application, it's really fun. And what I'm doing on this, okay, if I stamp out this stamp in black over the top of this, there's going to be so little contrast, you're not going to be able to see it very much, right? So one of the things I do on dark cardstocks, and it's really fun, you don't have to be, you know, very careful at all about it either, okay? But I start by doing something I call blocking out. So it's not particular to the star dream, but just kind of any type of, oh, surface that's, I would say, darker than a 50% gray. Okay, it doesn't have to be gray, but just anything like that, so things like uh, foils, you know, could be red foil, um, blue foil, anything like that. Anything that's fairly dark where you're going to stamp on it and black isn't going to have very much of a, a contrast where you're going to be able to see imagery very well. The blocking out is just, it's such a fast and easy and I would say, I don't know, it's just such a user-friendly way to do this, okay? And it's just getting um, your background kind of established so that when you stamp over the top of it in black ink, okay, a lot of the work is going to be done in many ways. Okay, so this is going to represent probably a nighttime scene just because it's a dark piece of cardstock, okay? All right, so the thing that I need to know is just in general where the, you know, the basic elements are going to be. So I can do like a whole block out area like this. It could be this big round white area, okay? I'd like to have it varied. I think it looks better, okay? So what that means in terms of our applications of this white on here is that you don't have to have it smooth. In fact, it might look even better if it's not very smooth, okay? So, um, or I, I wouldn't say smooth, but maybe evenly applied, okay? You don't have to have it evenly applied, so let's just lay some of this down. Now, I know the gist of where this is going to go, okay? So, like I said, that bridge is right in here, and we'll have some of that road kind of coming out this way, all right? But you don't have to be, you don't have to measure it out. One of the times when I did this the first time um, I ever tried it, I think I stamped out my image on um, it might have been on foil or something like that, but I just did it in dye-based ink just to kind of get my bearings roughly on where the imagery was, but later I figured, oh, it didn't even matter by the time I stamped my imagery over the top of it, you know. Like I said, it just... I didn't need that in there, okay? All right, so a lot of people were saying in the last couple designs, and it wasn't different for me, is like... I just did not know where you were going with that scene, you know? <laughs> you know, or not really with the scene, but with the foundation of everything. And I tell them, you know, hey, you know, sometimes I wonder that myself. I, I wasn't quite sure. I knew kind of the direction I wanted to move um, the scene in, but I just wasn't quite sure how I was going to get out of there with a kind of a, a with resolved a resolved overall, but especially like a resolved areas within the piece. So uh, on something like this, now I've done this before. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say a lot, you know, I started doing this last year. So like something like that, people might think, oh my God, you know, what is that going to be? I just, you know, it doesn't make sense. Okay. All right. Now, if I'm going to boot, do a similar compass and let's say I'm going to put the bridge up this way. Okay. So I'll put it a little bit in, um, I'll kind of block off some of it so that I can see that bridge structure. And hopefully when I stamp it in there, I'll get it roughly in the same area, okay? But again, you don't have to get it perfect, okay? All right, I think my white is getting a little bit dry. I might have to re -ink this. Hello, CM Hawkins, good to see you. All right, so there we go like that. I'll, maybe there'll be some trees above it or something like that. Now remember, we're working on a much smaller composition than this one right here. So this is going to be roughly like this, okay? This area of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're saying this is going to be that, you know what I mean? It's not going to look, you know, it's, it, the composition will be in terms of the structuring. It's not going to look like that in terms of the, uh, the end result, but this will be your kind of your variation on that, okay? All right, let's do, um, let's do a moon up here, okay? Um, let's do, 
I should really do a smaller moon. Um, this might be a little bit big here. But okay, let's do this one. Okay, I just I don't I didn't break out my uh, um, smaller hole punch, but let's do something like this. Okay, uh, let's grab a paper towel. Keeping in mind the um, the quicker, the faster styles of applications right here. I'll try not to take too long on this scene. All right, so rip paper towel becomes your um, your cloud template. Okay. All right. People are saying I just bought my templates. You know, for, you know. Uh, I could have just used a paper towel. Oh, you know, those paper towel. You know, those templates are really cool. You know, um, to make um, clouds and whatnot. This one typically is probably a little bit more organic, you know, just from the very nature of it. Um, but what you do with this is you kind of move it around a little bit. Don't feel you need to keep this all in place. What you're doing is you're kind of moving it a little bit. See, I just moved it like a eighth of an inch, quarter inch or something like that. Then I fill in a little bit more and then you get kind of that looking thing, okay, instead of this hard edged type of, you know, real stylized cloud, which are cool too, okay? I'm just not going for it in this piece right here, okay? All right, so we have that going back there. You're thinking, what the heck is that, okay? Now I'm just going to go like this, okay? And that's my moon. My moon is going to be kind of coming up from behind the cloud, so I, I need a smaller moon for this piece. So I'm just going for that rising moon, or you can call it a setting moon, whatever you want it to be, okay? All right, so we'll just go like this. And we'll have that like so. There's our moon. We need to, you know, create a little bit of a stronger um, highlight on those clouds right next to the moon. So now that I know where the moon is going, I'll add more ink like that. Okay. So we get these different looks like that. Some of these areas down here kind of might represent clouds or they might just, you know, I might be stamping them where the trees are going to go that are in um, the covered bridge design. We'll see. Anything above those trees will look like clouds and fog, all right? And anything below it'll just seem like the illuminated forms of the design, okay? I'm kind of saying that, you know, in some ways, some of it's in theory. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not exactly sure how it'll come out. All right, so um, this is um, this is your clouds under your moon, okay? They're being toplit. This is your clouds over your moon. You just flip this around like this. And if I create clouds right here, they're going to be bottom lit because the cloud is, I mean the moon, the light source is underneath it, okay? All right, so you go like this and... All right, here's, here's a little trick that I'm doing here too. See, I start it right around my, you know, uh, template and there you have it then I want it transitioned I don't want just to you know just to apply it only in one area like that and then I lift it and then there's nothing out here okay so what you do is you come in here and you can add in some more like that you can rub it around whatever you want you I usually go below and I smooth that area out so it looks like that cloud is kind of glowing a little bit more Glad you enjoyed the 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 this, uh, the videos uh, halls for crafts. Hello Cheryl. Hello Froggy Fresh. Hello in Maine. Don in Maine. Hello Beverly. All right. So see that right there. You have a little bit lighter, close to your light source like that. Okay. All right, so that is that. This is kind of, you know, it's a little bit damp and uh, moist. You can, we can go in and add more later, but you know, when you do something like that, a, a lot of your work is done when you stamp over the top of it. And I'll do, I'll try to do a braired scene. Anyone, have you used a brayer in a while? I haven't, but talk about a quick application of a, uh, of a, a scene and the brayers are a really great way to go. Same thing with um, photo stamping. I'll use, um, I'll do some photo stamping here. I haven't done like alcohol ink coloring on a photo in a while. So 
I am uh, hoping uh, it will come out. <laughs> you know? Okay, so like I said, I haven't practiced, you know, at a lot of these uh, things in a while. Okay, let's see. I'm just getting my bearings here. I think these trees are going to go out a little bit more. Let's build that up a little bit more. Or I could, I don't know, I could stamp it lower too. All right, so everyone get this, you know, right here? Everyone, I mean, it's not like some kind of like fantastic looking, super smooth, evenly applied type of application right there, but hopefully it's not going to matter. But the one thing that I'm kind of wondering about is, I'm, I always kind of um, am wondering if I should dry this or not before I stamp over it. Maybe I should dry it a little bit, you know, just so it's not, you know, I'm not stamping kind of a wet, think, ink, thick ink into a damp, semi-thick application of, you know, another ink where it doesn't, you know, the, the image doesn't transfer well. But let's give this a try here. Ah, the gel plates, yeah, that would be, uh, these are printing mechanisms here, so those gel plates. I'm really glad to see things like those gel plates um, out there and people using those, um, you know, traditional, you know, I mean, when we're doing um, rubber stamping, we're doing printing, you know. So having like these kind of more traditional um, styles of printing kind of incorporated into the, uh, you know, the repertoire of a, uh, of the rubber stamper is, is really fantastic, card makers and whatnot. All right, so I'm going to use the Brilliance ink, and let's see if I've inked this up enough. It looks pretty wet and juicy. I don't want to, I don't like over inking my um, pigment inks because they're thick already, okay? And my designs, uh, are, there's tight detail in them. So if it's over inked with a really thick ink, I don't want it pooling up in the, uh, in those detailed areas. Okay. So, okay. It looks pretty good. It, it's, I do this like a medium, um, dampness it, just about all my, um, all of my inks, except for my light dye based inks where I'm using them as a, as kind of a foundation coat. And I want a lot of coverage and I'm a little bit out of focus here. There we go. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to put this right in here. Um, the front of that um, covered bridge is right here. I don't want it, the, the front of it to be like over here. So I'm going to bring it back this way a little bit. And I just kind of put my finger roughly where I think it is and where I want it to be within this composition like this. Okay. So go like this. I'm going to stand up for this one. I think I always go overkill on this because I'm used to stamping out something. I'm thinking about dye based inks when I'm doing this, but you know, the pigment ink is just so much thicker. I just think I don't, I probably didn't need to apply so much, you know, uh, pressure. I'm not right really forcing this down with like, you know, all the might that I can, but I'm applying pressure in the, uh, around on this, you know, so, you know, you go, left, right, top, bottom, center, like that. And then I just can't keep doing that a little bit just to get that ink to transfer. So that this, you know, that being said, I'll pull this off and it's like, oh my God, it didn't transfer, you know? But okay, yeah. It, it, I, I never get a missing area like that on such thick ink. There was still a little bit of that pink in that, uh, in that impression right there from the magenta from that last, uh, from that last uh, uh, card. All right, so that is that. Now, see what I mean? I mean, you didn't need to be perfect, you know, with your applications in here, okay? It's kind of varied in here. So I tend to think that that just looks like, you know, just part of the, part of the lighting in here. It's just, you know, where it's different, okay? 
And I'll, we'll bring in some extra white in here anyways, but see how that's like that? I don't know. Okay, I, I was thinking, I don't know if I'll use the bridge in there. That looks pretty good just as clouds, I think. We might be altering, making this scene even, uh, you know, like a faster application here. All right. The Brer and the Big Juicy Pad. The Big Juicy Pad, by the way, is from um, Ranger. And it's discontinued. They were discontinued, I don't know, probably what anyone know, like 10 years ago. Hello, Julie in Northeast Ohio. Good to see ya. I think, let's see, besides California, the only state that we used to do two shows in on the circuit every year was uh, Ohio, and it was, uh, well, we didn't do all the shows there in Cincinnati. I, I kind of take a couple years off from it and go back to it or whatnot, but uh, it was the Akron show and um, uh, Cincinnati. But, uh, oh yeah, printing stamps onto the gel plate. That sounds cool. And, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm thinking back to... Um, printmaking class. One of the things that I didn't have a chance to take in college, I always wanted to because I always loved seeing uh, the work that was coming out of there, was printmaking. You think, I don't know, you think I would have taken a, a printmaking class at some point in time, being that I, I ended up going into rubber stamping, which are printing mechanisms, but I just never, I don't know, I just didn't have the uh, the time or something like that. It just, it never worked into my schedule. But I think they were doing, I think they did probably a wood block or something, or linoleum blocks and uh, and uh, silk screen. I think that, you know, stuff like that. All right, so that is that. I'm still working on it, okay? But let's, let's throw on that fence here, that, um, down here. I don't think I've embossed on the, uh, on the star dream before um i don't think i will on this one either but i'm just kind of curious to know how that would take all right i'm gonna throw in the fences here again just like you know something like this okay um and let's see how that goes all right ah julie you were at uh, Adventures in Stamping, Akron. I always loved that show. I think either one or two years I taught classes on the Friday night, I think, before the show. And those were always fun, too. I didn't always teach classes at the show because we were limited to the amount of um, things that we could ship because it had had to fit into these um, these rolling cages that uh, um, Judy Kins and uh, Stamp of the Hand were using at the time, and we would ship those with the you know the different this one shipping company, and um, I don't know most of the times like. You know, this was all in the wood mounted stamp days, so um, it was uh, most of the stuff in that rolling cage were all of my, uh, uh, you know, the booth displays and things like that. You have to bring, you know, all that kind of structure for all of your, uh, your, uh, your booth uh, things, lights and everything like that, um, electrical, you know, your cash register and all that type of thing. Samples, you know. But Akron was always a good one. I always really enjoyed that. It was always a two-day show. It was the, uh, it was the from any booth at any show in the history of time, though. <laughs> And it's rightfully so. They closed off the men's bathroom on the second floor just to make it for women, you know, because otherwise, you know, 
you know, at, at those shows, it's 99% uh, women at those, uh, at those conventions. So I, I don't know, I must have, it seemed like it was a, uh, like three football fields to go down across the hall, go downstairs, down the elevators, escalators, and uh, go to the uh, the bottom floor convention area um, uh, restrooms. All right. Okay, so I'm going to fill in this area with some extra trees. Okay, like about like that. No masking required. Everyone always says, oh, you make it look so easy. That's well, because we don't do like any hard or time consuming types of um, um, uh, processes usually. You just kind of overlap everything. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, Julie, you did the, you did the um, stamp board um, make and take then, yeah. Um, I was telling some people uh, in the past that, you know, that I, a lot of people think, oh my God, that looks so hard. I would never be able to do it. I would think, you know, we used to do that, you know, in make and takes at shows, you know, and people would come out with really good results. So um, I don't know, but like I always tell people, um, we do want, you know, we hopefully when people look at a finished piece, they it looks like something, you know, fairly in-depth to create and not something that looked super simple and easy to do, right? We want kind of dynamic results. go with that. All right, now here's those little kind of tweaks that um, can make something like this kind of extra special, okay? Now, I don't know to do too much on here. I kind of wish that um, I didn't put so much white down there so that I can kind of bring it out a little bit more with some extra tone, but what I would do, well, let's just do it anyway here. Um, Oh, yeah, that's right. Rangers in uh, New Jersey, huh? Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in a little bit of extra lighting on this rooftop. Now, see how this rooftop is really uniform like that, okay? With that white ink applied. See, like I was saying, sometimes it's better if it's a little bit more varied looking. Okay, so I'm just going to mask it off like this. You don't need to... You don't need to cut out a mask specific to that whole thing, okay? Because we're not going to be applying this um, ink in uh, you know, a super unified um, way. I don't know if unified's the, the word, but um, uh, a whole you know, way. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just going to apply a few um, taps of white ink in one area okay see it's a little bit darker over here so i'm trying to i mean this is a really thin uh, like a little q-tip might be a better applicator for this purpose right here but let's see if it even shows up right here okay so go like that yeah it's a little bit lighter in the middle right there but like i said i didn't have too much contrast to play around with because it was already so white okay but okay, so here's here's the other things that I like to do in here, okay? So we have this mist, okay? This is what I call sandwiching the, the designs in, in many ways. We have that white in the background, right? And then we have our imagery, right, applied over the top of it, okay? But let's bring that cloudy type of formation in front of this so that you are sandwiching this form in between that type of lighting and texture. All right, all right, so here we go like this. And I'm applying it. I'm applying it kind of in a dry touch too, okay. Christine just ordered the fences. Hope you enjoy those ones. Now, one of the things about those fences too, Christine, see, they come in um, two different sizes on here in terms of the larger ones like that. So I used the smaller ones on this scene because it was smaller. On this one, I used 
the larger one right here and the smaller one right here in the distance. But since this is a smaller composition, I just use the smaller ones for that purpose. OK, but here's the sandwiching, OK? See, it's just kind of, I'm developing it really slowly, OK? And this is where it makes it really easy. It's This is not a hard um, process right here. But if we go in like this with like a super wet, juicy uh, white thing, then you have to use like a ton more touch. I don't do that, though. So I just come into it with a really light, kind of almost powdery, application of that white and then see it's just kind of kind of starts illuminating like this and then here we'll put it you know some down here if we want to like it's some kind of fog uh, coming off of uh you know what would be the stream down here okay it's it's already really dark down there because um i didn't apply a lot of the white ink down there before i did the impression so you're putting this like right in front of that um fence you know you can put a little bit at the base of some fences right here, like about like so. And I think it looks like uh, that low line mist I always mention, okay? It's like they do this in the movies. Every time uh, there's some kind of uh, scene, it doesn't have to be a horror scene or something like that. It could just be noon time out in the middle of a forest, but they always have those fog machines rolling. And it just gives everything a little bit more kind of atmosphere and also movement when you get this kind of, you know, stuff moving around in there. And plus it illuminates areas that, you know, were previously just kind of dark. Okay. So you have this like that. All right. So see that where I sandwiched that in there and it looks a little bit more three dimensional, I think. And plus you've brought something into the foreground that's also in the most distant areas of your scene. So this is what I'm always saying. If you add in that little white, you know, pigment ink effect, like in here, and here it is over the color. Here's that white pigment ink down here. There it is in the very distant areas up there. Here it is very close to us right down here. So it, we've given um, the scene a little bit of textural continuity, okay? All right, let's see. Um, all right. Uh, here white pigment, uh, white, not pigment ink, a white acrylic paint pen. Let's bring this out now. Bills. Yeah. Who needs them, huh? <laughs> you could make this into a horror scene. I have used the headless horseman around the covered bridge. You know, it's like the legend of Sleepy Hollow or whatever that movie was. And I've made not this one right here, but I've done this horse right here, but I just didn't color in the head, okay? And I put, I cut out a little orange pumpkin and put it right on his lap, like it's carrying that pumpkin around. So th yeah, I've done that a lot with the, uh, the covered bridge. And then what you do is like in the shadow areas, you use your white paint pen to do these little eyes, you know, kind of peeking out of the, uh, the shadows, like a, like a Scooby-Doo cartoon or something like that. And that's really fun. Those have been some of my favorite scenes that I've uh, done. Those, uh, those uh, Halloween headless horseman ones. All right, so this is this, and you might have seen it in the previous video, like this. You kind of put little um, highlights on the tops of your rungs, like this, of your fence, and it makes the fence a little bit more uh, three dimensional looking. Kind of hard for me to see the fence right in here because it's black on black. Okay, but do something like that. All right, and let's see down here. Let's do something. Let's have some fun with um, the same uh, rock texture that I've stamped down there. Do you remember these little rocks that I stamped down there? Well, it's got, you know, it's kind of dark down there. And one of the things that you can kind of do is use this in white, okay? In this darker area like so. All right, so see, it just gives it a little bit more kind of a, I don't know, I don't, I wouldn't just call it shimmering light, but you just have more, if you have more kind of more reflective types of elements within this piece, it kind of just starts to bring it to life in many ways, okay? Um, let's see, let's bring, okay, this is a lighter area around that um, moon, like so, so I'll bring some of this into it, like this. 
and I taper these dots, okay, what you do is you add a little bit more around that illuminated area, and then you kind of dissipate it. You spread it out a little bit like that, okay? So it's like a little bit of a, oh, I don't know, a reflective area within that space. Okay, now this is just like this amorphic type of cloud area. So you have it on, you know, you can have it on that as well as, you know, like harder objects like this, okay? Now I'm just looking for opportunities for this type of thing in here. Sometimes I like to do it on, um, on a little pathway here, kind of going up into this area. It kind of gives the viewer kind of this little, it's like these little sparkling little areas right in here. Let me kind of bring this in a little bit. See this right here, where it's just illuminated a little bit more? So it's kind of welcoming the viewer and it's kind of giving them, you know, this little pathway to follow visual from a visual standpoint, okay? Oh, here. So we have these trees right up here. You do the same thing that you do on the trees as the clouds back here. So you kind of add a few little highlights on these and it just gives them that little three-dimensional type of look. In something like this, it'd be fun to splatter paint um, in like a Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White too. You can put a little highlight on the tops of your bridge here too. So everything just kind of reiterates top lighting. So top lighting on the top of that cloud. Well, this one's bottom lit because the cloud's above the, you know, the moon. Top lit trees, top lit bridge, top lit, you know what I mean? I think you get the idea. And it goes something like that. And that's what it looks like in general, you know, when you're looking at, you know, the card at arm's distance. But these little sparkly little elements like that can really add that nice little touch. You can glue in a, you know, like a little crystal up here, you know, to make something look extra little blingy. I mean, this is a pretty simplistic type of um, um, technique to do this scene right here, okay? Um, and you can do a lot of them too, you know? I mean, this is one of those things where, I mean, you don't have to do all these little details on here like that, but if you do a lot of blocking out like that on, you know, some lapis lazuli or whatever color you want to work with. Um, uh, and then you just stamp over it in black. I mean, that looked okay as is, but if you just do a little bit more of that uh, fogging or something like that, that can ma really make for a complete um, type of scene. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, this one's the lapis lazuli, K. Okay? And this one's the text weight, you know. Um, which I wasn't quite sure about using when I first got it, but I've almost, I almost kind of like the text weight of the, uh, Star Dreams more than the, uh, the, um, the cover weight, which is, really surprises me because this one right here, I don't know, I don't get that curl, you know, it's, it doesn't start curling on me with the, you know, the thicker styles of paper, like if I heat set it, I don't know, I think it's because it's, it's just so thin and also unlike um, my card stocks where I do a lot of layering of color and it's got, you know, three layers of dye-based ink on there. I don't do that on here, so I don't need this to be very absorbent at all, okay? Um, yeah, let's see here. Um, oh, does Maine have a lot of covered bridges? I, I was wondering, I wasn't quite sure if um, Acadia had some covered bridges. They have those carriage paths, right? Is that what they call them? Um, I never went on those while I was there. Um, okay, so let's see here. Should I try this? This is, look at this, this isn't even open, right? Look at this, I don't, I don't know if you can tell, but it's the plastic itself, it's like yellowing right here. Let's just try it and let's have some fun, huh? So this is the beach umbrella. We used to sell these, um, uh, when we were doing, especially when we were doing shows, uh, who was the one that went to that Akron show? You might have even used, I don't know, one of the um, the big and juicy pads to brayer in a background behind your um, uh, lighthouse on stamp board. All right, folks, I'm opening it up here. Uh, there's no kind of collector's type of uh, reason to um, have a an unopened version of something like in the collector's market, you know. 
uh, what is that? What is that? Those abbreviations. Um, un, I forget. It's still in box. <laughs> Unopened in box. There's this term that people use for like uh, like baseball cards and stuff like that or whatever. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, I don't know. You guys don't need me to see this. Oh, it says stamp down or brayer squarely onto paper. Okay, now this thing is probably going to be all mixed with one another, okay? Pennsylvania is the place I need to go to. 200. Are they all kind of like historical landmarks or something like that? Or a lot of them? I bet you they are, huh? I was wondering where all those bridges were. Okay, so um, should I do this one on the glossy? Let's do it on glossy. I haven't worked on glossy in a while, okay? New in package. Is that what it is? I there was something else. There was another one than that. I haven't heard of that one. Um, uh, see, seal. Isn't the word sealed in there or something like that? All right, folks. Let me see here. Okay, so I'm going like this. Which colors do I want to use? Like this end of it or this end of it? Like I said, they're probably all mixed. I think I'm going to go like for here. Okay, thinking that this probably bled into this part. So something like this. I have to kind of wonder which one, which which is going to be up and which is going to be down. I think it's going to be. I think I'm going to do. Th well, that maybe I'll do this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this right here, okay? So it's going to be kind of warmer down below and kind of cooler up top, all right? Let's give, let's give this a shot here. Here's what I always had to tell people, you know, when you're at a convention, if they haven't done brayering before, please do not do it this way. <laughs> so you have to always catch people, you know, when they're about to do that, or you have to really kind of emphasize the uh, direction of it, okay? All right, let's see if this is still working. This is probably a... Oh, I don't remember when the last show that we did was. And we weren't always using these pads here, so this could be... Um, uh, your pad could be dried up, K. Yeah, if it's open. I don't know, but for me, um, I have a bunch that are opened, and I never re-inked them, and they're still... I don't know if they're as juicy as when I, you know... It's 10 years ago, but there's still a decent amount in there like that. Um, what is that? A little piece of water right there. Uh, let me get another thing. I got a drip of like water right there off something. Oh, oh, I cleaned off my uh, brayer before. I used it on the uh, Seaside Cove. Okay, I think this is coated in right here. I, I don't do this a lot, so... I can't remember the last time I've done this. So there's probably a video of me doing brayering, and it's probably from three years ago. I think that's the last time I've done it. All right, so this is the way this always looks, okay? Um, so you keep going like this, okay? It's all choppy looking, and people are thinking, think, oh my God, that's not going to work out. But you have to just keep going like this. And then you kind of change the... Um, I don't know what it, what is it? The rotation of it, you know? So you get this kind of little bit more even like that. Okay, now you can see it's just not, you know what I mean? We don't have that fresh kind of orangish tinge anymore, yellowish in there anymore. All right, I need a little bit more. I think we can call it big. It's not just big and juicy. It's like big and like blended together now. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to get this area right here to kind of smooth out a little bit more. Inevitably, what I do on these pieces, though, I add more ink afterwards. Okay. This kind of just provides that foundation. This is one of the first um, applications of uh, things that I've done. Um, in this section of the website that I used to call, um, was it quick and easy scenes or something? It was like that. It was in the lessons section. It was like something like that. And it was like the Braird uh, kind of technique was 
a lot of people's answers to doing things like Christmas cards where, you know what I mean? They just didn't want to have to do, you know, a huge application of, uh, you know, background variations, you know, varied colors like this. They just want to, you know, mass produce, I don't know, 20, 30, whatever, 40 cards. And then the brayers kind of answered all of their, I don't know, uh, time constraint, time issue consideration. Okay, so let me see. Let's go with, maybe that, that one's a little bit too bright. Let's go with a, let's go with something like this. This is like a, a wine, okay. Is this, I don't know, is this how you do it? I haven't done this, like I said, in a while. It's kind of strange how I'm getting this, kind of these, like, lines coming down like that. I don't know why. It's almost like a, it's like this is revealing some kind of, like, uh, differences in, uh, I don't know, the paper, the surface thing. Unless it's the rotation of this. Like, I'm hitting it in a different area all the time with the roller. I think that maybe that's it. All right, all you printmakers out there, you're probably like cringing at something I'm doing from kind of from a technique standpoint that's uh, that's not right. All right, let's see. I think that'll do right there. All right. All right, so um, one of the things about Ranger inks is that they're kind of thick, so that would be things like the Adirondack, the Big and Juicies, um, the Distress inks and whatnot, so I'm just wondering how my impression is going to look on there right now. Uh, I'm wondering, again, should I kind of, um, should I, should I heat set a little bit? If I heat set this right now, it's going to look really dull also, so... Um, you know, I spray seal this uh, later on, so um, we'll see how that goes. All right, so let's go with the impression again. And all right, let's see. Uh, we want to do some other types of things on here. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> I haven't brayered in a long time. It's a good, it's a great technique. I don't know about using that big and juicy pad again, though, but... Um, you know, go for some brighter colors. So if I'm going for something like a really bright sky or something like that, this this is bothering my right here. I, I want I want this to be like really super easy and fast to do, but there isn't just I need a, like a kick of some color down there, right? It, it's not it's not uh, varied enough and rich. Let's let's hit it with a little bit more, okay? Roll and lift. Okay, I was kind of, I was kind of doing that. Uh, lift and roll. Don, well, Don says lift and roll, and CM Hawkins said roll and lift. So which one is it? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. It needs, it needs something else down here, doesn't it? You know. Let's do this right here. I don't know, you know, the, the Lakeside Cove, I'm thinking, would probably be better with this one. Something more of a solid thing with all these open spaces in here. But since we are with the theme, going with the theme of um, the, uh, the covered bridge, let's just use the covered bridge again. Kind of something with a little bit more of a solid silhouette against this would look kind of cool. But I want to try it, all right? Um, this right here, this area right here kind of gives me this idea for, um, doing this, uh, I, I posted onto the Stampscapes Facebook group this, um, it was a video off YouTube or Instagram where someone had these northern lights, but the, the horizon looked just like that right there. But then it went into this like super bright crimson red up there. And um, I was wondering, I kind of posted the uh, question, would we be able to achieve that different that look easier or more effectively using like a red foil and applying like black inks down this way? See how that has that glowing kind of look that you can kind of get if you get the, you know, the right, you know, kind of 
uh, lighting on it, but then have this kind of darkened in up here. Then you can have this kind of flamey looking motion to um, kind of northern light thing. Or is it better to stamp on um, this type of paper and to give it, uh, um, you know, use your inks, you know, and do them, you know, more custom. You know, speaking of that, I think this would look good. Let's let's make this into a northern light thing, okay? Let me do this right here. Let's let's move into this right now. So I just talked myself into something right there. I wasn't even thinking about it before. Okay, but again, we don't want this to take forever or anything like that, okay? Like I said, these are pretty quick and easy. I mean, it's just getting the background like this. You know, once we stamp our imagery down there, it's not going to take very much longer than that. But um, let's see, let's go like this. It needs to become much richer up top here, okay? This is magenta. It, you know, after I get done with all this, it's like, I don't know if we really needed that uh, the big and juicy pad in there. Maybe not. Maybe it inspired the, uh, I don't know, the rest of this piece or something like that. In, time, in terms of the tones here. All right, so violet. These two last pads of mine that I just used are really kind of starting to disintegrate. I don't know if you can see that surface right there, but it's kind of indented right there. I know that's out of focus a little bit, but can you see that right there? But it's still good for this type of usage. Maybe not. It's coming off right there. Here. Oh, that's really disintegrating. Maybe it's not so good for that usage. Let's see. All right. All right, I think we got away with it there, kind of. All right. Um, you can replace these pads right here. Is that, is anyone on here that uh, posted what they did with the uh, the replacement of the uh, the Marvy ink pad fabric? I forgot what we did in uh, what you did in that. It was this certain maybe it was a Ranger foam or something like that, Cra some kind of crafting foam that you did. Okay, let's see. All right. Have you ever used a gel plate? I haven't, Kay. Not yet. I do need to I do need to give it a shot though sometime. All right, so let's see here. All right, so this I mean that Brayer thing. I mean that that twenty-year-old, if I if I if that pad was probably ten years uh, newer, that would have given me a really great foundation. But the just you know all the inks had kind of blended together, so that wasn't so good. So, I mean, you can do those things where you just get those colors on here, and um, you know you start off with a much faster foundation. I mean, before we just brayer it down there and then just go straight on there. And, uh, you know, you stamp out whatever you want. We did it a lot on stamp board, too. Um, all right. Yeah, it looks better with that uh, that pop of yellow there, doesn't it, Don? It needed that intensity up there. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go in, and I'm going to give, try to give this a little bit more of a streaky look right here. And uh, try to give it this little Northern Lights-ish looking type of background. And again, like I said, it's... I don't know how that, you know, how the covered bridge is going to look underneath this, but, you know, we can add additional colors to that later on, okay? All right, now I'm just going with the brown. Brown is a really great tone to use with so many different color schemes and whatnot. Um, yeah, what was that? What was that? What, what's that squirrel there? What was that in reference to? Okay, so this is just plain brown. It's kind of a medium brown. And it relates to these different colors here, okay? Look about like so. And then let's go into... Oh, let's go to a dark brown. I was just giving someone my recommendations for um, different colors of Marvy pads because they didn't like the um, um, the intensity level 
in the end result that they were getting from the various brands of pads that she has, okay? Now, one of the things that I asked her was, was that, are you spray sealing your pieces, okay? Because like this ink can potentially dry dull. Now I've used the Marvy ink down here, but it also has that Ranger in there and the Ranger inks, as well as just about every other ink. A lot of times you can't tell if something looks a little bit duller because we're using them on matte cardstock and we're also not like glazing so many layers on there. But when you build up a lot of different colors and especially when you see them wet, there's a certain kind of deep intensity to them. And then when they dry, it's like, oh my gosh, it dried like completely like frosted over and dull looking. But then you spray seal it and it can, you know, oftentimes or almost all the time bring back the vibrancy of the freshly applied look. Okay. Cut and dry. Thank you. That was it. Thank you. I need to get some of that. All right. So I am adding this down like so. This is surprisingly feeling very dry on me with all that ink that I've used. Okay, let's go to black on this one. This is where um, this kind of this northern lighty looking kind of scenario really comes um, into view. Uh, for me, it's when I go to the black like this. If I make this redder in here, then I can submit my uh, my piece for that. Uh, I don't know. We were talking about like doing a, like a challenge in the uh, Stampscapes Facebook group. You know, kind of getting something in the spirit of that uh, that video. It was. I think it was a time lapse video. I had never seen um, kind of a Northern Lights looking like that, like such a crimson red and uh, glowing like that. It was really a, uh, it was really cool looking. All right. So that is that, I mean, that's not supposed to, you know, it's just uh, kind of in the spirit of, you know, some kind of lights like that. Okay. All right. So that, like I said, this feels pretty dry here. So I'm just going to stamp over it now and we'll do that in black dye based ink. I could do it in the brilliance too, but I want to do, I think I'm going to be doing some additional little types of coloring in here. Or I should probably do this in a dye-based ink that will stain the paper as opposed to the brilliance ink that'll be stained on the surface. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, PJB Snavers, it's like uh, I always say like that quote, art is what takes place between the initial concept and the final result. So <laughs> It's like, uh, that did not work. It, I don't know. I mean, it, it could have worked for certain types of looks, you know, but it, I don't know. To me, it was uh, those inks in there were, you know, were already kind of blended and a little bit murky looking. I didn't like that. Uh, all right. So let me see. Let me re-ink my pad a little bit here. Again. It's because I'm going, you know, on top of that. So I need to get a really strong impression. Don't over ink your pads though. Like I said, we don't want things to, uh, to puddle up and to get into the details in there. I think I'm going to stamp this one a little bit lower. Okay. So that this road is kind of down in this area. I don't think I'll have room for the fences, but I just don't want to run those trees up into that darker area too much. Okay. Now this one, I, I'm going to allow for that ink to transfer quite a bit, okay? Just in case it is um, a little bit moist underneath there. Okay, so remember, um, dye-based inks work by staining, okay? And your pigment inks are a lot more surface-oriented. Um, uh, the VersaFine Claire, a lot of that pigment ink, that pigment stays on the surface, but then you get the oil that needs to absorb into the 
pulp of the paper, you know, past the surface. So that's how that dries a lot, by absorption and a little bit by evaporation, but a lot of it's by absorption. Uh, but but dye-based stains, it's by staining. So allow your things to stain. You don't have to hold it down forever if it's on just on a white piece of paper because the paper is exposed, but we have it underneath, I don't know, it's like six layers of uh, ink that are already um, laid down there, okay? All right, so we have a nice dark impression like that, okay? And I did, like I said, I didn't leave too much room in here, but let's get... Um, Let's get some extra impressions in here, just to build it up a little bit. I'm supposed to be doing it in the spirit of that other composition. I, I didn't, I haven't used like the bridges in here or something like that yet, but um, let's see. Let's build up a few little extra trees in here. Okay, this would be a perfect spot for a quote though, won't it? Like up in that sky like that, that open sky. Okay, I'm going to wipe off the bottom of this where it's transitioning into my other trees, okay? So it's just like clouds. You wipe the bottom portion where it's transitioning a little bit. So ink up, wipe off, stamp, okay? Or just dab off, maybe that'd be better. I'm just trying to get a little bit more of a, you know, an area where it's just not straight across like that, okay? I think it's more graceful if it's a little bit more varied like that. Let's go like this. All right, so it's kind of like that. All right. I think that helped down there with that yellow, huh? It's kind of glowing a little bit more. All right, now we have this area up in our sky. It's still a little bit wet, you can kind of tell, right? But let's hit that area up there. To me, that area up top there, I mean, it looks okay. It'll be better when it's spray sealed because I'll get a little bit more of a glow going in there. But let's hit it with a little bit more contrast, okay? And I've dry, I've cleaned off my toothbrush here before this video, which I always forget to do. And let's go in here and mix up some um, bleed proof white, okay? All right, Bleed Proof White is an opaque white pigment ink, okay? And I'm just getting very little of it, just right in the tip of this toothbrush, okay? And then I wipe a lot of it out of there. So I'm probably using about, I don't know, that would be about 25% of the tip. And then I'm wiping a lot of it out, so it's kind of like a dry amount, not dry amount, but just a, a minimal amount of that in that area right there, okay? So let's just, uh, let's keep this as stars up here. So I'll just kind of m loosely mask off my trees like that, okay? And let's go like this. All right, so we have some of that like that. Yeah, it looks like a sky a little bit more, doesn't it? that and we've kind of added a white element there I mean the stars wouldn't be a light source in the scene you know like that would illuminate the bottom portion but it's good to have a little bit of that kind of element up there and then if I want to use you know some um, sort of uh, highlighting down below I can do that okay so here's the thing a lot of times I use you know that white um, acrylic paint pen when there's a white light source like that, okay? In this one right here, I've retained the white of the paper, so you can see these um, white little touches in here, okay? I, I did different color, pink and white and things like that within that color scheme. There's some green um, highlights down here in the green grass area, okay? But on this one, there isn't... Um, like any white of the paper. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I have, you know, this is where these acrylic pen, pens really come into play like this. I don't have to go for such a stark um, highlight with these pens like this. Here's, here's the white you can see. Here's white, but then these colors right here are kind of within that color scheme, right? So you can get a much more subtle um, highlight down here that you, where you get the texture, but you don't have the contrast. 
you know, where like white might look kind of awkward down there, okay? Uh, create, uh, Cindy, what you do is you remove a lot of the paint out of your brush, okay? Like, but you don't have to be scared of it because you can always just take, you know, a piece of scratch paper, not this one right here, you know, your foil, but you just flicker on there, right? You don't have to, you don't have to go on the finished piece. It's like you're a, you know, you're a golfer walking up to the tee. You don't just like swing away. You take a few practice swings, right? <laughs> That's, I know that's a bad analogy, but um, yeah, you know, why not just flick it onto uh, something else and see what uh, what consistency is coming off there. And um, if you want to, if you if you were worried about, you would never f worry about flicking on too little, right? So why don't you do too little? Why don't you just flick it from like a foot away, you know? And you know that spray pattern goes out like that. You know, fear, fear not the flick, as they say in uh, splatter painting classes. <laughs> All right. Okay, so here's the, um, I know this is like a, I don't know what color this is. It's like a peach or something like that. Okay. So let's bring out some little highlights down here. I don't want this to stand out too much, I, you know. Uh, in fact, I, I don't want it to be too um, too apparent at all. I want it to kind of blend in with the background. Let's see if you can see that. Can you see that, you know, those little highlights kind of coming out like that? I mean, it's just something really small like this can kind of, it adds in a real subtle type of detailing in here. Um, you have this water area down there. Maybe, you know, you put a couple little gold sparkles in there, like in the water, you know, some kind of glitter type of thing like that. But see these rocks in here, how they're a little bit more highlighted. Now, that, it's not standing out too well, but here's one of those things about Cindy saying, for her, she's worried about kind of doing a little bit of splatter painting like that, okay? And what you do is you remove a lot of the paint. Like I said, there's very little in there. And I'm when I'm doing this thing, I'm just kind of releasing it like, three bristles at a time or four okay like this i'm going like this i'm not going like zip like that okay but with this for me i don't want too stark of a highlight down here so i start off with a darker one like this you know what i mean okay so that being said um i'll put a few little highlights now see how this really stands out in the darker area like that so i just apply less in those areas and i'll apply it more in the lighter area like so, okay? So that the contrast between this and the background isn't quite so stark. So I'm not gonna do anything up here. It'll just stand out too much. Okay, there's a little fences right in the background like that. I'm just kind of bringing those out a little bit. All right, so that is the darker one like that. But see, yeah, just little details like that. Doesn't that little fence kind of stand out a little bit more three-dimensionally. I mean, you don't have to do it. I think it looked fine without it, but I just think it it gives it that little extra touch. And I'm not going to use the white pigment ink in here either because there's no white light shining in here, okay? This would be good for like a little northern light type of thing and or a, like a north star type of twinkly light in there, but I don't know, that might stand out a little bit too much too. Okay, so this one's lighter. Can you see that really standing out more? So I'll add that, but you just do it kind of sparingly like this, okay? And I'm adding it kind of in the lighter area. I'll have some of these rocks in here, kind of capturing some of that. That really stands out, and that's not even white right there, so... I won't add too much of it in here. I'll bring out that fence even more. Eh, that's a little bit too much. I'm just kind of blot it off like this. All right. Okay, so we have something like that. That kind of brings, it's not looking too bad, huh? For a, um, you know, pretty minimal type of uh, application of, uh, you know, imagery in here. Oh, let's go with this now. Let's go, um, let me see. 
All right, this is going to add in a little bit of time on our so-called fast applications, but let's do this right here. I want this to be pretty dynamic, okay? So this is black, and black against this, that's not gonna stand, stand out very much, right? But let's emboss these. So let's go with the Versifying Claire um, on the leaves, okay? These overhanging leaves like so. Let's put them down here like that. All right, see that right there? And um, I'm winging this a lot more than I thought I would. I thought it was just gonna be a brayer with the images stamped on top. It's gone into it. You know, a lot of times, <laughs> this is what I always tell people, um, with scenes in the, the things that we're trying to create and compose, a lot of times you just kind of have to, at some point in time, you kind of have to just start listening to the card and just letting it take you in a direction that it wants to go in, even though it might be going, I don't know if it's contrary or opposite to your original intention, but it kind of might be going in a different direction, you know, more conducive for kind of whatever's happened on there. All right. All right. So, uh, ultra fine, clear embossing powder. So, okay. Oh, this is one that maybe um, using um, one of those embossing things would have worked. I have it all in there. All right, here's my uh, my embossing tool. My my uh, I guess that's my middle finger. I've given my I've given my card the finger, the middle finger. All right, let's see. Yeah, I guess that got it off. I can brush off a little bit of that, but I don't think I need to. Okay. If it's a little bit raised and, you know, with that embossing powder on there, no big deal. All right. Okay, let's see how this looks um, embossed. And this one will be done. We'll have another card done. Um, let's see, okay. All right, totally curled here, but this card will be end up being mounted on something. I'm not sure what to mount this one on. Would I still do it with a little bit of that white just to bring out those stars a little bit more? Or um, some other color, maybe some gold star dream or something like that around on the perimeter would be kind of cool. Let me see, where's my gold? Oh, I don't know if I have some gold here or even like that, you know, actually, no, <laughs> the, the uh, totally uh, chromed out gold would be too much. All right. So that is that. Look at that like that. I wasn't sure how those trees would look. I think they look OK like that and that yellow down there. Um, I don't know, it kind of contrasts pretty well against that um, top area top part so here's our two cards so far a couple different variations they have like completely different looks to them this one still could use some sort of a oh you know what I mean like a quote or a word stamp in here would kind of be cool in 
I think gold would go really well with it. I don't know. All right, so that is that. Um, let's see. Okay, so. All right, I haven't done this in a long time, okay? But it's the alcohol inks on to a photo paper, okay? So talk about, you know, starting off with something that's um, just inherently already finished. So on something like this, see, this, this is the type of thing that um, I was mentioning earlier where you don't have to have, you know, this background you know, perfectly applied with where you believe the imagery is going to be, having it kind of a little bit more varied is fine. That's kind of what we have to do with the spirit of, if you're stamping on a, a piece of, a print of clouds, right? Um, so, um, yeah, that being said, I mean, like, I don't know, I wouldn't stamp something like this and have that covered bridge in this area of the card like this, okay? because that dark area right in here, there's just too much contrast that would be showing through. But something like this, maybe, you know, you can have that covered bridge like down here, or something like that, where you have that um, lighting coming from above, or even like something like this might be pretty dramatic, right? In fact, I kind of like that. Wouldn't that be cool to have that bridge like right in that space right there? That might be kind of interesting. Let's give it a try, okay? I don't know if I've used this one before, um, print. So I have a bunch of prints on the my Flickr account, and the Flickr account is in the, um, uh, or the cloud, the cloud album is in the Flickr account, and then the Flickr account is noted in the uh, description section of the videos all right it's just called clouds and they're all free for download i mean people you can go out and take photos of clouds yourself on your on your phones you know and if you have a printer at home print them out um on just regular photo paper okay this isn't printed out on like cardstock or anything like this you can see you know it's like you know date stamp there from i don't know costco or something like that I just had a bunch of stuff printed at Costco. Now Costco doesn't have their uh, photo department anymore, but um, you can still order them from wherever, you know, does that type of thing. Um, for me, if I'm printing out like 20 prints or something like that, I just don't want to use up all my uh, ink, uh, inkjet stuff. And it's, it was cheap enough. Sometimes like on Vista prints or something, or not Vista prints, but like Shutterfly, you get those coupons for like, I don't know, what is it? like 50 feet prints or something like, or things and you just pay for uh, like shipping or something. I don't know how they do that. Okay, so anyways, let's go like this. So this is called photo stamping, okay? Just regular dye-based inks, okay? Um, you can use your stays on or something like that, but dye-based inks print perfectly well on photo paper, okay? You just can't blend a bunch of uh, different tones on photo paper because they, you, if you try coloring on them with like a dye-based inks, this, it just dries like instantly. Or that paper, that emulsion coating on there, it just um, dries so fast. Yeah, Flickr's still out there, Kay. Um, they were big, like, I don't know, when was it, like 20 years ago or something like that, when Yahoo, which was big at the time, I don't know, they were in partnership with them somehow. You could sign in with your, you know, your Yahoo account, I think, on that. All right, now this is going to be, um, this bridge right here, it's going to be in this darker area down here, but this little billowy area is going to be in the little foreground, and hopefully it gives it that kind of dreamy look. If it doesn't look good, though, I'll just, you know, I'll just change up a little bit. But on this one right here, I do believe that I'll be able to use my um, white pigment ink to kind of bring out the rooftop of the bridge a little bit, okay? So, you know, where you stamp your imagery on these types of um, photo prints does matter. If they're open styles of designs, meaning there's light areas in there. If I'm just stamping like dark uh, pine trees or something like that, or silhouettes, you can use basically any background because you're going to be stamping on just like solid um, black imagery, dark imagery over the top of them, okay? 
So rooftops, stuff like that, you know, do matter. Okay. All right, so. Go like this. All right. And we have our imagery like that and it's done. No, <laughs> it could be, you know, some people just do some things like that or stamp in there. You have some tree limbs coming in from the side and, you know, it makes for a pretty fast thing. So pretty fast uh, application. Maybe I'll use this one one more time. Okay, let's see. Let's go with, let's just stamp in our foreground right now, okay? I'll just do it all at once. Now, photo stamping isn't just on, like, cloud backgrounds. People have done, like, I don't know, they've taken photographs of, like, the ocean or something like that and stamped out, like, distant uh, islands on it or, you know, they've stamped, uh, you know, their objects in on the water, in the water um, with really cool dramatic results. I think, let me see, what are some of the most, most creative ones? Sometimes they're like whole trees and everything, like a whole snowy scene. Snowy scenes are great too because it's that white kind of uh, terrain in there. So it's really conducive for stamping whatever you want in there. You know, there's plenty of open space in which to, uh, you know, cr to create your uh, pieces. All right, so a little bit of a foreground like that. And again, this is just the dye-based ink here. All right. A little bit of foreground. I think I tried embossing on photo paper once. I didn't like it. It, it reacted too much. That photo paper reacted too much with all that heat, and I just didn't think it worked very well. Um, but that was one of my recent experiments, okay? And I didn't really investigate it too much further than that. Okay, so on something like this, um, you can come into it with extra colors if you want to. Um, why don't we just do that for the heck of it, okay? I think it kind of looks good monochromatic, though. But let's go in here with a little bit of tone. So the thing that I'm doing on here is I'm kind of going into it with with the spirit of kind of a um, like an old black and white photo tinting type of uh, exercise, meaning I'm coming into it with kind of duller tones. I, I, I'm breaking this one out just in case I need something a little bit brighter. All right, so these are alcohol inks, okay? Um, people used to use dye-based inks, okay, but dye-based inks really kind of get set instantly where these alcohol inks with this photo paper emulsion like this stay a lot more on the surface so you can blend them out. So if I don't like it, I can just almost like, not erase it, but you can kind of uh, alter it um, quite a bit, okay, and which is what I think I'm going to need to do here, especially, um, like I said, I'm very, I'm not practiced at this lately. So I kind of forgot, you kind of get the feel of it a little bit. And one of the things is too, is you kind of get, I kind of forget what, how the inks kind of feel or how they kind of move around on here. All right, so where I'm using this right now, this is a really light tone, so I can't even see it over the top of this gray. It is getting a little bit warmer though. Do you see that right there like that? Yeah, I mean, you can tell it's warmer, a warmer tinge than right there, okay? Let's come into it like this. On top of the mill. I mean, uh, not the mill, but the bridge. Okay. I'm picking up some of that ink. I didn't let this dry at all, either. Um... Yeah, I haven't used a stamping platform, but that's a really great um, uh, tool for that uh, kind of impression quality. But the stamping platforms too, there's different things that I've thought that we can do with that too, just because it's, uh, 
you can stamp over and over, you know, with that repetition like that. But there was something, I forgot what it was, where we stamp out something, then do something else, then stamp over it again. And I thought the only way I can do that is with a platform, but, you know, I don't have a platform, so I couldn't do it. <laughs> All right, so here's some of this green. Now that's looking way too green, but my other ones were just like invisible, so I need to go in here with a brighter tinge, okay? I don't want that right here, but it's going to be, I'm gonna use my blender pen on there and hopefully it'll come out. Okay, this is the part where it's like, I don't remember how I did it before or how it felt, okay? So here's a little bit of this, um, Camel, kind of a little brownish tinge down here, like so. The white ink, the white pigment ink will be employed on this one, believe me. The things that, uh, the white pigment ink tends to get used a lot more on my pieces that look really clunky and my application looks really, you know, I don't know. Uh, less than uh, less than uh, refined, shall I put it? I'm not an expert on like a lot of different media out there, folks. Hello, Crystal Fire. Ten thirty. No, stay up all night with us. Um, this uh, this uh, live broadcast is a marathon. So everyone's all jacked up on uh, coffee and uh, energy drinks. Joking. I was thinking one of these days we should do a marathon type of thing. At those conventions, you know, speaking of uh, those different conventions like the Akron show, you know, someone's that that did the uh, the pieces. I mean, we would do we would be doing those uh, demonstrations and uh, everything like that for the full you know duration of the show. It was like eight hours of nonstop stamping. Sometimes I didn't, never got up, too. But it didn't feel like that. You know, it's like the time flies, though. All right, so adding this down. I'm not going for, like, super bright tones, okay? It's going to be, you know, kind of more of, like, a subdued look here, okay? All right, going into that green where it was, like, really kind of, uh, you know, um, bright and, you know, kind of... Uh, uh, I wouldn't call it obscene, <laughs> but, you know, definitely not uh, not integrated, let's say, okay? So I'm just kind of blending it in a little bit more with each of these types of things. And again, we'll use some of these other types of uh, colors in here. All right, uh, let's, let's go into the, uh, let's go into that um, covered bridge a little bit more. Let's see if I have a more of a brownish tinge. I, I'm having a hard time getting, kind of building that kind of brownish tint. That's, that's a little bit more right there. Okay. You don't have to get it even or anything like that. Like I said, it's kind of a little bit better if you have it a little bit less even. All right. All right. So let's go with something like that. All right. Um, here. Let's see this. Let's do this too. Let's bring a little bit of this down here. I'm just kind of adding a few little drops of that color. Not drops, but little textures of it. And then here, let's go in with our blending. I don't use my blending um, pen very often, but sometimes I do, okay. Okay blend in some of that green up there like so all right so that's kind of what i'm going for there i don't know exactly what i'm going for but um this one almost can use a little bit more of that fence right there but i think i'm going to stop at that all right so let's see let's bring in the let's employ our white pigment ink um all right and i think this should be the thing that really brings it together um Let's see. That. Oh, Diane. Uh, yeah, everyone, help out. Yeah, help out with Diane with the uh, stamping platforms. So other word, other terms for it are stamping positioners. Okay, they're. I don't know what would you call it. It's like a. It's like a miniature kind of a stamping printmaking 
um, platform. It looks like a, what does it look like to you? It looks like a, oh, I don't know what it would be. It has this lid on the, t I don't know, everyone else helped me out with this one because I don't even have one. You guys are the ones that are using that. You can describe it better than I can. All right, so here's my white pigment ink, okay? I really love it up in my sky areas, although there's all these wispy little areas already. If I use this down here, it's good to have it up here too, okay? All right, so let's go in and I'm just kind of illuminating this area. The pigment ink kind of, you know, it, it applies a little bit differently to um, photo paper than it does to paper, okay? You can just kind of see it there. Um, as you apply it down on this, it's a little bit less forgiving. If I don't like it, it's kind of a little bit harder to come uh, rub off of there. So kind of um, apply it a little bit more, oh, I, I would call it methodically, you know, so kind of have a drier application. But see that kind of glow starting to happen up there? All right. I mean, you don't really need to just if you're not doing it down below, but from a textural standpoint and color standpoint a little bit, see I'm kind of putting some over those tree limb leaves like that, and it kind of makes those a little bit more illuminated. You have the light from the background coming through these leaves if you put some of that light white on the leaf itself, okay? All right. So like that. I think the leaves, you know, the branches look a little bit more three-dimensional. They look kind of like they're a part of the photograph, don't, don't they? A little bit more. See, there's a little bit of white up here. Let's put, you know, I can put some of that. I don't put it in here because there's no light in back of it. So you add the white kind of in an area um, where there's white that already exists like that. Unless it's lapis lazuli where there's no white on this, you know, but you're just kind of creating the whole lighting scheme itself. All right, so let's start adding it down here. There's not a lot of white down here, but I, I really need to add some of this down here to integrate the uh, piece, the impression, something like that. I, I'm, every time I do this, I'm kind of like, when I go like that, when I stop, I'm kind of getting a look at this area, but I'm also looking at it like this whole area. So I'm focused like this when I'm applying these little things, like little white dots too, you know. And then what I do is when I stop, I look at this area to see how it's looking, how it's affecting that whole general area like that. Sometimes when you start adding these little things, we, come, we, can, we have like tunnel vision where we're doing this, and then we're doing this and we're doing this, but it's a good idea to kind of look at a bigger area or just the piece on an overall, you know, see how light that's looking right there. So it's a good idea to kind of like, you know, kind of mentally zoom out too, you know, as well as visually when you're working on little, like specific little areas like that, okay? And I, I say that because it's entirely possible to kind of like go like this and then you know, after like five minutes, you kind of zoom out and it's like, oh my God, you know, you filled up everything or something like that. Or there's like little white um, dots, you know, like highlighting dots everywhere. You know, it's like uh, Christmas lights or something like that. Which if it's around Christmas, that would be fine, right? All right, so adding it, some of it down here. This might look good with a little tiny bit of a, I'm still thinking about that um, uh, fence down here. Now see this photograph too, it wasn't inherently very light down here. So this is a way to kind of introduce some light back into it, okay? All right, uh, now here's what, one of the things that I really wanted to do on that other piece, but I just didn't have the opportunity because it was already a little bit too dark. Or no, it was too light. Um, I wanted to bring out this rooftop a little bit more, okay? So this is a perfect opportunity for doing something like that. So I'm just going to take this, eh, let's go, let's do it in three sides like this, okay? Okay, so this is before. So that rooftop, it's just not, it's just not 
kind of standing out a little bit. Um, or it's, stand, it's not standing out enough. So I'm just going to mask over. You don't need to cut out a, like a post-it note mask or anything like that. You just go like that, right? And then you don't apply an equal layer of that uh, white pigment ink over the whole thing. You just kind of hit it. And see, I'm just doing a very light application of it right now. And um, you can, you know, you can check it out while you're doing that, but um, see, something like that. And now see, look, look at that light on there. Doesn't that look like so much better? But look at this right here. See, I didn't need to do the whole thing. You just, I just went like this, like that. And I concentrated a little bit more in the front, but then see how it transitions like that. So now you have that, you know, the top of the rooftop catching that light. And then it's the same type of light because the same pigment ink that you used up in the light source. So it looks, you know, like it's coming down like that. Okay. And by the way, this is a glossy photo print, but you know, you can do it on like a mat or something like that too. And it might have a different kind of look to it or a different spirit. But these are really fun to do. I'm taking a little bit longer to do on this one. Again, I haven't done this for a really long time. I don't remember when the last photo stamping print that I, you know, I did was, but it's it's been a little while. All right, and let's see. Yeah, I'm just kind of adding some of these over the trees in the background like that a little bit more, and it kind of pushes them in the distance, I think, from a visual standpoint, visual depth standpoint, that. I think that kind of looks good with that little bit of white pigment ink on, coming out of there almost, you know? And again, it kind of creates this little pathway for the viewer to kind of enter that um, road a little bit. Uh, you know what, here's what I'm looking at right here. <clears throat> This little area right here looks open to me. I, it just needs a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit of reeds, I think. I was thinking about a fence just to close this area up, but the road comes around that way. I'll just put a little bit of this right here, like that. I'll still leave this open, you know, where the road kind of comes down here, but see that kind of little area like that kind of framed that off in a way. All right, so anyways, that is that. Um, let, here, let me do this too. Um, let's create a little bit more um, kind of illumination maybe in these this grassy area right here. Or I don't know, just throughout. We can hit, we can hit this with a white um, paint pen and it'll look uh, pretty decent, I think. But we'll hit some little highlights in here just to get that little bit of extra texture and I guess it's color too. I don't know if you can see that down there. Does that look a little bit more three-dimensional with a few little like greenish um, highlights like that? We'll use it a little bit more in the trees up here too. You can kind of manipulate these pens where it's like giving you like a really, really tiny dot too. Like I'm just barely touching it down on the uh, surface of the page. Okay, I think that's what this needed right in here. I think it's giving my trees a little bit more kind of volume uh, you know, a little bit more of a rounded touch like that. Let's see, let look at it like that. And let's go in with white. Let's finish off with white in here. Thanks for helping out with that description on those platforms. The best thing, you know, the best thing for those uh, stamping platforms is to watch a video on it, you know, 
it's like a picture tells a thousand words, but they're describing it, you know, perfectly like that. It's like this hinged, you know, printing mechanism, but uh, there's different purposes for it in terms of uh, um, stamp positioning, repetition of imagery to get, you know, a better impression. Um, I didn't grow up using one though, so I, I just uh, I don't use it. For my stamps too, I, I want everything overlapped, you know, pretty good. I mean, there are times when I thought, especially when I'm doing things like um, when I'm stamping uh, like word stamps, where I'm thinking, eh, you know, that positioner would be, it wouldn't be bad right now. <laughs> Okay, now just like on um, with uh, uh, any other types of papers, my white pigment ink kind of foggy little effect, it dries darker looking and more see-through, okay, than, um, than what it looks like when it's been freshly applied. So I'll, let me just hit it with a couple little finishing touches too. Okay, so a little bit of highlights on that rooftop. I don't know, maybe that's a little bit too much, but like that. And let's hit a little bit more here. Okay, how about right down here? And just to draw the viewer's eye in, a little bit more in here. I think that area up there looks okay. It's already in kind of in, oops, that's way too much. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I didn't focus in, or I didn't focus out. All right, there we go. How did that get so slathery wet like that? All right, something like that. All right, so there's your photo stamping application. Now that wasn't, you know, I want these all these pieces to be a lot faster than that one, but I don't know, I started coloring on there and thinking about all these different things. But okay, so here's some different applications right here. All right. Now on this one right here, I, I was thinking about adding a lot more colors, but that would be if I was using kind of a much lighter, um, foundation okay if the if, if this area down here is like all in a lot of whites then i was thinking about adding in some autumn tones like that and really taking advantage of the uh the ability to blend like reds yellows oranges and that you know browns or whatever in those leaves like that okay so if i was do do something like that i just like that dramatic lighting up there so i kind of went with that one this one would be kind of interesting with some light beams coming down in here too <laughs> I don't, if you bear with me, I, I, I think I might want to do that. But see, something like this one right here, there's a much more open area like that in those, in those uh, white areas like that. Okay, so I, you know, I would have been able to do much more, I don't know, varied colors in that area. All right, this isn't going to take too long right here. This really is asking for some um some light beams like this okay i think this would look really cool in here let's do it kind of minimally though all right so let's say some light is coming out from right in there okay i'm going to put my light source or my um vanishing point right here and this is where the point where all the beams are coming from okay let's just make it easy i'm going to do it right from that um that tip of that leaf right there okay but it's going to be coming out from behind these uh, clouds right there. They're already illuminated, so it's really, you know, going to be easy. So I'll have some, like, a beam coming out from here and, like, down this way. I'll have some beam go behind those trees, and we'll have one coming in front of the trees. How about that? So it's, like, really kind of three-dimensional like that. Okay. Um, time to break out those stamps, uh, uh, Diane. Diane. 
Oh, you got a toddler there. That's fun times there. Fruit smoothie and cartoon. Oh my gosh, those are such... That sounds like a great time there. The times with the toddler. That went... Uh, that went too fast. Everyone always told me it goes really fast, so I made sure to not take it for granted there. My, uh, my teen um, is working his first job, and uh, he started on, uh, what day is today? Thursday. He started on Monday. <laughs> In my mind, I was thinking, I don't, I don't know if how much of, uh, how much of Sean I'm going to be seeing over this summer. As he's, he's going to be, always be at the gym. All right, so that's one beam like that. Okay, I mean, it looks really weird, you know, when you just do it. Anytime you add like a new texture or new color or something like that, especially if it's a texture, um, it looks weird and out of place. Okay. Like those colors of greens down there, it, you have to add kind of uniform, or not not uniform, but uh, consistent textures. And see here, this is where I've added a little bit more white, and then I've dissipated it out this way. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're doing your pieces. Um, anytime you do something new onto it, especially if it's like something that's really stands out, you know, like that light beam. Okay, it's going to look weird. Anytime it's a new color, or one thing that's where. People that are doing these types of processes, a lot of times, they kind of get panicky. They like, like, whoa, you know, that doesn't look good. And a lot of times it doesn't look good if it's only in one area, okay? So you just kind of uh, keep building it up, you know, like white pigment ink or something like that, a little bit of fog. It's like, what? That doesn't look right. It's like totally out of place there. Um, Let's see. Okay, so I'm designing my beams and uh, kind of putting them where I think I want to put it. Hello, Sophia. Uh, I am sitting to, with my feet tucked under. <laughs> I don't know. I keep switching around it depending on kind of what uh, angle I'm at here. Okay, so let's do a beam coming. Uh, let's put this one, let's put a couple beams or one beam like going behind these trees like this, okay? These ones can kind of go in behind the beam uh, trees. And, and then I'll have this, another beam like coming in front of it, okay? Let's, let's do the one in front first, like this. See this? See this? I'm emanating it from that one leaf like that, okay? And that's how you keep these beams kind of like natural looking, okay? So let's go like this. I tell you what, let's do this right here. See that tree right there? I'll put that tree in front of it right there, but I'll have the beam coming out in back here. How's that? Okay, now where, let me see. Where's my clouds? Okay, the clouds are right here. Okay, so I'll go like this. And I'm going to try to wrap it around that tree so the tree is kind of, uh, you know, influencing that beam a little bit. Okay, but here's what I want. You see, I'm kind of adding more right up here. And as I go down, I want, I'm having less. So I, I just don't want to put too much of uh, the white down here. I mean, you know, we can always look at it and see how it's looking, but... Um, uh, you know, you can, all, you can always add more. Okay, so there's that beam like that. So see that? It's kind of like that tree is in front of it. So it's like going back there like that. Okay. And like I said, you know, it's like, okay, that beam's not light enough. You know, you can always make it lighter. But like I said, this is on the photo paper. So on the photo paper, you have to be a little bit more, oh, uh, kind of decisive, you know, because that, I can kind of wipe it off as you saw me do in here a little bit, but it was setting up pretty fast. And this is brilliant zinc that dries really, you know, a lot faster than like a like a color box. So that being said, you can do this like a color box and it just doesn't dry as fast. You know, if you want to have, you know, a little bit more control of it and as far as the, 
the you know the ability to remove um, some ink. All right. And you don't have to make these beams. You can make it like lighter and darker and lighter, you know, because it's like some of the clouds, you know, may be kind of influencing it. But see, this one's a little bit brighter or lighter than that one. I don't know, what do they say? You know, you should do things in odd numbers. So there's four beams. Let's, let's add another one, like maybe over here or something like that. The beams help, I think, on this one. It, it, there's at least, there's more drama in it, at least. Okay, let's go like this, and let's have it coming out right here. Uh, your vocabulary word of the day is a uh, is a uh, crepuscular rays. All right, that's like that. All right. Okay, so with the rays in there. I'm just going to do a little tweak here too. I'm going to put a little bit more kind of highlighting on a couple little objects that are kind of within the path of this beam right here. So I'll just kind of illuminate them a little bit more with a little bit more acrylic ink like so. But I think that, I don't know, it changed the spirit of it. That scene really became about the beams, didn't it? But I, I don't know, it just seemed perfect for this uh, this particular cloud like this. So, okay, so that being said, I mean, there's a lot of different opportunities when you're working with um, photographs like this. So like this one right here, here's a really bright area. You can have beams coming out from that. You know, you can have some, just some trees down here, you know, like three pine trees or something like that. You know, so if you look at any of these things like this, I mean, some of them, there's a much more definitive area. You can have like that covered bridge like this and the beams could be like going upwards too, like that. That would be a perfect spot. You see where that really lit area is right in here. You can have some beams going upward in the sky too. They don't always have to be coming down. Um, you know, the you know, it's just a lower thing. Here's a perfect spot right in here. You can have the beams going. This would be perfect for, you know, like this and the beams can be going up and that's like this. Look at this perfect opportunity down here for like this staging, you know. If you did a beam on this, you, you wouldn't be able to see it as much. It'd be much more subtle because it's lighter in here in general. I don't know, maybe this one, you, you know, it would be overkill to put those beams in there. But that being said, you know, when you stamp your image over the front of it in black, if you want to bring that light from the background into the foreground, you just throw a beam, you know, a few beams over it like that. Anyway. So that is that. Um, three different cards like this. Um, I didn't, these weren't, you know, these weren't, you know, I we've loaded these up, you know, in terms of uh, some different um, techniques on here too. I mean, they're not, they're not short of technique, you know, in terms of uh, visuals. And I mean, we have embossing on here, um, splatter paint, here's that splatter painting in there too. Um, as far as uh, stars go, one of the things about splatter painting too, you can't really, it's really hard to control. Um, I can control the amount of splatter I'm doing, okay? I can just flick off onto something you know, some scratch paper, dark scratch paper. And then when it just gets really light and sparingly, you know what I mean? Where hardly anything's coming up, then you can go on there. But it's hard to, uh, to control the size of, uh, you know, the dots. So I like to add in some variation like this. Let's go like that. There's uh, that and three there. Okay, I'm gonna... Anyone know what uh, constellation that is? <laughs> but see that right there, you hit it with some different colors like that. Oh, I mean, this is kind of, you know, that, I don't know, what, what color is that in the background there? It's not mauve, but I don't know. But here's like a pink, you know, variation. And it's kind of that pinkish tinge, right? So you can add in a related tone, you know, up there. I mean, it's really subtle, but 
I mean, if it has those colors up there, why not add in some of those extra colors like that into the mix? If you have these pens like that, here's like this color right here. I gotta shake it up, but you know, I use that purple tinge up there. And uh, I think adding in these little things like this, this would be a really great um, place to add like a couple little crystals up there too, I think. I haven't done the crystals in a while, but um, Andy, you can do the blue star dream for sure, and the and the beams. Andy took all. And Andy took a lot of the classes. Um, all right, that is that. All right, uh, yeah, wine burgundy. Okay, so. Uh, I need, let's go from, um, here, we, we started, did we do, th this one was first, right? This one was second, this one was the third piece. All right, folks. Names for these. <laughs> it's that period right now. What, uh, what should we name this? It, one of the things is, too, I didn't use on this at all, is I, I didn't do any shading with some additional black ink. I mean, you could do that, and it adds an extra tone and shadow work, you know. Like, if I wanted to make that side of that a little bit darker, that would be kind of cool, you know, to, to uh, you know, change the lighting of it a little bit, or to increase lighting, I guess you can say. Let's see, let's do a little bit of that. Let's see. Um, all right, let's take a little bit of this right here, okay? I want to have control over this. I don't want to go in with this blob at this point in time, but let's just darken in the side of this. See, I'm, I'm just darkening it in with a little bit of a, you know, really faint black right here, like that. Okay, so that's, you know, it's a little bit darker on the side. I made it a little bit blotchy there, but see that, it just makes that, you know, kind of covered bridge look a little bit more, uh, I don't know, three-dimensional, I guess, like that. Uh, you know, black colored pencil would have been fine too. Um, and it works on the Star Dream too. Star Dreams, um, it's uh, it's porous enough. Let me let me just get a little bit of more variation on that. I should I should use my pencil on the Star Dream a little bit more. That works really good. Okay, so uh, let me see. Frosty Blue Morning. That's a good one. It kind of fits the uh, kind of texturing of this. Are there any other Midnight Covered Bridge? Hmm, that's a good one too. This, the naming thing, it, it makes it tough because a lot of you guys come up with a really great and fitting names like that. So I guess the way we'll do is, is that, you know, if anyone seconds one of those uh, things or, you know, as people are coming up with them, maybe you kind of make, uh, you alter a, alter a name or something like that based on what someone's thrown out there. Um, let's see. Multiplicities. Frosty's Blue Morning. Okay. Oh, Frosty Blue Morning. Well, there's a second for that one. Oh yeah, that, well that's uh that would be a good yeah covered bridge trio for the for all three as a whole like that. Oh blue mist okay so that was a blue mist. Alaska sky beaming light okay so let's start off with this one right here is are we going with the frosty blue morning two there was two votes for that one, I I think right did that yeah PJB and uh, multiplicity. Said so that frosty blue morning. Here's what happens. May I have a bad memory? So let's see. Frosty blue morning. Frosty blue morning. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have a good idea for the uh what color do we come up with that? What, what did you guys say this was? Um, all right. What about a name for this one right here? Does this, uh, does this evoke 
anything uh, anything in particular here. The Alaskan sky. I don't think there's too many covered bridge in Alaska. Not that we ha not that there has to be though. You know what I mean? Sometimes when people say, "Hey, you know, uh, I haven't seen a sky like that anywhere." before and i say well you know the scene i don't know i haven't said this in 20 years but i used to say hey you know the the scene doesn't necessarily uh it's not necessarily on earth alaska sky okay it's frosty blue morning is that what we call it frosty blue morning okay can we got that one i'm gonna car i'm gonna format these into the cards too at some point in time they'll look a lot better um on cards you know um Midnight cover. There was Alaska sky. This one's midnight cover right here. Middle one evokes a sleepy, spooky, sleepy hollow. We need that character in the foreground here carrying that pumpkin. The headless uh, character. You gotta, you gotta look at that one, uh, Crystal Fire. I think I have two or three covered bridge scenes in the spirit of uh, sleepy. Hollow. I think I did a, I did a really big one. I. Th think and then i think i did a quick version of it but i think i did another one the year after that too and all kind of in that uh you know that uh you know dark looking um thing oh obi-wan yeah that's right that came out like midnight last night i think have a good watch on that one um mystical being murky morning so there's two for alaskan sky I got a murky morning, spooky sleepy hollow, uh, mystical being. Did I say mystical being? Twilight bridges. Uh oh, that sounds pretty good too. Which one are we going with here? <laughs> I might have done that one. There might have been the skeleton that also stamped out that scene, uh, as opposed to me. Yeah, I, you see it. Uh, it might be in... I don't know if I have a holiday. I might have a holiday playlist on the uh, Stampscapes channel. Most of them are Christmas, but... Um, um, yeah. Okay, I, I think there's only one that got a, a second on the Alaska Bridge. Uh, or uh, what, what was it called? Twilight Bridges. Okay, and he said Twilight Bridges. There's two for Twilight Bridges. Okay. Beams of... Uh, I, I think the Twilight Bridge... It's not really Bridges, though, huh? Because there's only one. Let's see. Twilight, Twilight Alaska Bridge. Alaska Twilight. What about that? Alaskan Twilight Bridge. AK. <laughs> Twilight Bridge. Twilight's my, like, my favorite time of day, I think. Everyone likes sunsets, and I love them too, but I think my favorite time is uh, Twilight. Okay, this one right here. Beams of Hope. Sounds pretty good. Okay, how about this one here, folks? Any kind of... Uh, does this uh, kind of evoke any kind of uh, words here? Beams of serenity. Hmm. That one's awfully good, too. All right, just on those first two, it's... it's uh, Those ones are going to be tough to beat, I think. But it's up to you guys. I just might merge things in there, you know what I mean? The, the, like with the, like the Alaska, I'll just throw that in front of it. Like we threw in the, uh, that, uh, what was that? I threw in the color, you know, yeah. Beams of hope. Is that the winner right there? Beams of hope. That's better than beams of despair, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll do another one one day where there's like these black beams coming down, you know, in the spirit of like, say, um, uh, Supernatural or something like that. I'm talking about the series. All right. Beam me up. <laughs> All right. How does that sound? So we have, uh, what was it again? 
Frosty Blue Morning, Alaskan Twilight Bridge, I think, right? And Beams of Hope, Just Before Dawn. See, that's a, this is tough. I was thinking, man, a lot of people came up with some really great titles for these pieces. I was thinking, these, these are better titles than I would come up with. Like, I, you know, if I was titling these pieces, it might be like um, Beams Over Covered Bridge. <laughs> Not always. I try to get more a little bit more poetic than that. But a lot of times it's, you know, it's just a very straight uh, kind of, a, you know, sterile kind of description of the, the piece, you know. Moon, cloud, and bridge, you know. But anyways, so, okay, so that was three different uh, compositions here and um uh I, you know i could have made these go faster you know i hadn't done the um the brayer thing and it was like okay those colors were just really anemic okay but the reason why i was using that is because you know if that pad was working really well and you just give yourself this you know very quick um background in there like that and you just stamp over it like that it can really give you a really fast application for the designs, just having those inherent colors that are already established. Because, you know, when you have something like this, the lighting is already established, okay? On something like this, we're really directing lighting from the get-go. You can customize a piece of white paper much more than you can, you know, just with a, you know, just a monochrome, you know, mono-value uh, piece of paper. But you can still, you know, go and manipulate um, your values across there. It's just that you're not customizing it through a bunch of different hue in here, okay? But I think these pieces in general, I don't think they're missing anything in terms of, uh, you know, needing something more on them, okay? Um, and you can really, you know, you can almost do these things in mass production, but it's little things like, you know, embossing like that, you know, where you can add in a lot of extra depth, just with one extra step that's, you know, pretty easy to do. Or in here, you know, we had that, you know, you just put a few more dots with your, you know, your paint pens or something like that in there just to make it a little bit extra special. Something like this too. Maybe if it was like a, like a blue tinge scene or something like that, but, you know, having like one little um, sparkly crystal up there would be really cool too. Um, yeah. But uh, did we change the name there? Heavenly Beams... Do you want that one right there? That sounds pretty good, actually, to throw in the heavenly. After I get done stamping, I have terrible handwriting. <laughs> you know? It's like too much of this and this and this. I like build up like a, I don't know, like muscle memory and tightness a little bit. But anyway, okay, but yeah, faster applications. Well, they're certainly faster because they're smaller too, okay? But there's all kinds of different techniques. There, and there's other techniques after this too. Um, just stamping like on foiled pieces or something like that, you know, where there's, you know, where there's no toning to do and you can use like word stamps and whatnot. I think the word stamps on all these pieces would be pretty cool too. Like you can slip like a one word in like that little area right there, right in here. Like, like I said, gold ink, not on this one right here. I didn't leave any space in there like that, but um, yeah. Okay. Good night, Froggy Fresh, and I think, yeah, speaking of that, why don't we end this video right here, and, uh, I don't know, consider, you know, some different types of surfaces there for, you know, some faster applications if you want, you know, and all of these, I wouldn't call this one like a mass production type of thing, but you can get some pretty good variation on there, you know, uh, you know, when you're dabbing this in there, but remember the little swirly type of thing that really spreads out a lot of ink in there. And again, if you're using these brilliant inks like this, you know, you can really kind of, they can set up and dry on you pretty fast. So you can get these pretty cool applications like that, you know, for your different types of looks. It's a lot less customization than going in with, you know, particular types of colors and color areas and textures and then like that. But again, you know, it's fun to work these things like that. Like this one right here was really fun, you know, adding in those beams like that. So, um, yeah, photo stamping is pretty awesome. And uh, like I said, it's perfect uh, um, surface for um, your alcohol inks that you probably already have too. So, yeah. All right. So thanks so much again, everyone, for joining in. Always great to see all of you. For those of you that, uh, you know, 
uh, you're more uh, watching in the background and not posting. Thanks to all of you for um, checking out the video and uh, uh, logging in and whatever, subscribing, uh, notifications bell and all that type of fun stuff. Uh, Cindy K, Crystal Fire, Candy, Barrett, Froggy Fresh, I already left probably. Annie, great seeing you all. And hopefully we'll see you on the next uh, the next uh, live stream. Thanks, Christine. Glad you like them all. Uh, good night, good morning, and good afternoon, wherever you might be. All right, signing off. Uh, good night, Diana. Thanks again for joining in. Oh, yeah, let's say thanks. Cecile, good to see you. Thanks for uh, joining in. Oh, Jeannie. Uh, Jeannie, I didn't put you to sleep yet. Maybe it's a little bit too early for you to fall asleep to that to the to the uh, to the vids. <laughs> Good night, Darcy. Oh, you were at the supermarket. Great. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone.